Welcome back to the type system. I'm Daniel and in this video we're going to talk about type members. So let's get back to our IDE and create a new Scala application for this type members lesson. So a new Scala application, let's call this type members, make this an object and as usual extends app. So let's start with this lesson by declaring a small class hierarchy with animals, dogs and cats. So a dog extends animal and cat extends animal. These types themselves won't be incredibly useful because we are going to talk about type members. So here's what I mean. If I create a class, let's call this animal collection, then I can define type members inside by saying type, let's call this animal type. And this is just an abstract type member. Now having defined this type, I can then use it in variable or value definitions and in method signatures. I can also have type, for example, bounded animal, which is bounded, that is upper bounded in animal which must extend animal. Again, this is an abstract type member upper bounded with animal. We can have multiple bounds, for example, super bounded animal, which is, for example, a super bound of dog. All right, so this is lower bounded in dog, but upper bounded in animal. So we have multiple type bounds here. And we can also have type aliases. So if I have, for example, uh, animal C equals cat, okay, then this is just another name for an existing type. Now, abstract type members are mostly for us to help the compiler do some type inference for us. So we won't see them too much in practice. For example, if I do uh, an AC equals new animal collection, I can say val dog of type AC dot animal type, so notice how we can use this little type and just equals whatever. All right, so we can use that, but we can't really construct anything of ac.animalType because there is no constructor. There is no information that will allow the compiler to build animal type. Also, even if we have some bounded types, for example, if I say valcat of type ac.boundedAnimal, I cannot associate a new cat to it because we don't know what bounded animal is. I cannot say that this is a cat because it might be a crocodile for all we know. So because the compiler doesn't know what bounded animal is, it will just not compile this code. So I'm just gonna comment all of these out. The compiler does allow us to build, for example, a dog if we declare this as a super bounded animal. So for example, if I say val pup of type AC dot super bounded animal equals new dog, then the compiler allows us to do that. But any other super type of dog doesn't work because this super bounded animal is some super type of dog. So it's allowing us to say super type equals new dog, whatever the super type is. But if we put in some other type on the right hand side, the compiler will not know if this is viable. So it will just not compile our code. But type aliases are fine. So if I say val cat of type ac dot animal c equals new cat, then this is fine because the compiler basically equates animal c with a cat. So it will know that the cat has a constructor. So the association is fine. Type aliases in particular also work outside. So if we say type cat alias equals cat that is the type of cat itself, then I can simply say val another cat of type cat alias equals new cat. And type aliases are often used in practice, especially when you have name collisions with a lot of packages imported. Now type members, abstract type members that is, are sometimes used in APIs that look similar to generics. So for example, if I wanted to create a trait called my list, which is 
normally a generic type T, right? We can say treat my list with an abstract type member T and with a method add, for example, with an element of type T, which is a my list. And we can extend the trait by saying a class, let's say non empty list with a value of type int, for example, and this extends my list. And we would need to override both of these members because they're both abstract. So we would need to override the type t, saying that this is int, and the def add would need to receive an element of type int and it will return a my list. Okay, so this is a valid overwriting of a type member. Now notice that the override type member is not really computed because we supplied the types here explicitly. All right, so in API design, you might see this kind of code, which is basically an alternative to generics. The next thing that I wanna to talk to you about is the dot type. So we can use some values type as a type alias. So for example, if I say type cats type as a type alias to cat, which is this guy dot type, then this is a type alias. And I can associate other things to this type. So if, for example, I say val new cat of type, this newly defined cat type equals cat, then this is perfectly compilable code. The problem is that I cannot instantiate new elements of this type. I can only do association. So for example, if I try to say new cat's type, and if I compile this, the compiler says class type required but lectures whatever cat type found. That's because the compiler cannot really find if this type is constructible or not, and if it is, what kind of arguments it receives. So this is basically it in terms of type members. You can declare type members, you can bound them, and you can do type aliases. And you also have access to the dot type members of an instance. All right, so this is basically the lesson. Now, let's practice what we've learned with a small exercise, which is quite fun and quite useful. And this is a classical API designer problem. To enforce a type to be applicable, to some types only, okay? So here's the thing. Here's a definition of a linked list with a type member. So I have a trait called mList from a type member, right? And this has an abstract type member A and has some two method definitions like head, which returns an A, and a tail, which returns an mList. Okay, so you have no control over this guy. So this is locked because someone else wrote the API for it, okay? So this was written by a different team. Now, for some reason, as a technical lead in your team, you consider this decision to be absolutely stupid because this M list should not be applicable, but for numbers, okay? So for example, this class, for example, custom list with head string and tail custom list extends m list with the type a with overridden to be string and the head and tail uh, implemented really quickly as head and uh, tail as uh, tl this thing should not compile so if I compile this, oh, that's because I constructed the new cats type, but if I comment this out, the code would otherwise compile fine. But you don't want it to. So you want this to not compile, and an equivalent definition for, let's say, int with int and int list, and the type A is int, you want this guy to compile. So this guy should be okay, and this guy should not be okay. 
So given that someone else, a different team, wrote the mList trait, how do you enforce at compile time that this code doesn't compile because it's not applicable to numbers, and this code does compile because it's applicable to int? As a hint, all the numbers are under the number type. So the number type is what you need. Okay, so use type members and type member constraints with bounds when solving this exercise. Pause the video, think about how you would do that, and I'm going to come up with a really quick solution in a few seconds. So, this is not quite trivial to think about, but here is how I would do it. I would add another trait called applicable to numbers. And I would add an abstract type member A, which is only applicable to numbers. That is, type A is upper bounded in number. And this code, because it is in my power, I have the freedom to modify by mixing in my little applicable with numbers trait. So in this moment, if I recompile, the compiler complains that overriding the type A does not conform with bounds extending number. But if I comment this out and I let int list compile, the code will compile fine. So this was a cute exercise that used abstract type members to enforce some constraints by the compiler or at compile time. So that's it with type members. I'm Daniel, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.